Plate Troop Swift here. This video is a follow-up to the video on how to get your own minis into 3D Canvas, and today we'll be looking at how to use completely free tools, in this case Blender, to give your minis a custom paint job. Because of the slightly different way we prepare the models for this, I will be starting from the top. A lot of these steps are unnecessary if you're not looking to paint the mini, so if that's the case then you'd likely be better served by the first video. But anyway, the first step is to still start with Blender and load in your STL file, same as before. In this case I'm using the same model as before, which is this Gunslinger character, and I've not done anything except move it into place in the middle of the scene here. So the first thing we're going to do is actually select our model here and copy it. I just use Ctrl C and Ctrl V for that. And we're going to name one of these minis something like Gunslinger High. And I'm going to name the other one Gunslinger Low. And uh, the reason for that is going to become clear later. For now, let's hide the High Poly one, or the Gunslinger High there, so that we've just got the Low selected. And go over to the Modeling workspace. So we can see we've got all these vertices selected and all that. And then right click on the mini and go to merge vertices and by distance. And what that'll do is that'll find any vertices or any of these little points that are very, very close to any others and weld them together. So that will close up any like little gaps or little issues in the model that we might not be able to see from the outside. So next thing, let's go back to the layout window just because it's a bit of a more clear view. And then let's click on the blue wrench on the right here. Similar to before, we'll go up to Add Modifier, but this time we're going to use the Remesh modifier. And essentially what this Remesh modifier is going to be doing is it's going to be rebuilding the model parametrically or automatically. Right now it's rebuilding it out of voxels and the voxels are rather too big, so you know, it's a bit of a blocky mess. So for this sort of thing, decrease the voxel size until there's nothing broken off on the model. Like, let's add a zero here. And as you can see, this is much closer, but down here, we've seemed to have a bit of a hole in the, the coat. Yeah, there's some more holes over there. So we need to turn the voxels even lower. Let's say, add a zero, five. And there we go. We've got the uh, model kind of smoothly remeshed. This stage here, it might reduce the amount of polygons in your model, or it might increase it. The main thing this is doing is it's making the mesh very even, so all the vertices are like similar distances apart, which makes it behave a little bit better with the steps we're going to be doing later. Anyway, next step is to click on smooth shading, which will apply a smooth shader over the whole thing, and then click this down arrow and apply. The next thing to do is add modifier again and decimate, and this is the same one that we used in the last video. So currently down to the bottom right, verts or vertices, we've got about 1.8 million. Ideally, we want that to be less than 20,000 or so as a rough ballpark figure. So let's reduce this down to 1% of its current value. Let's say 0 0.01. And there we go. We have reduced the amount of polygons dramatically. Our verts are now 18,000, which is much closer to what we want. The bottle itself looks like a bit of a blobby mess, but that's completely fine. Um, as we'll see, we will counteract that later. So next step would be drop down again and apply. So now we've got this optimized low poly model with 18,000 verts and this original high poly model with 583,000. As you can see, the low poly model is much less detailed than the high poly. We want those details, but we also don't want to have the model be millions of polygons or whatever, so we will cheat. The next step is to make a copy of this low poly model we've got. I just use Ctrl C, Ctrl V again, and then rename this model to Cage. Hide the other low poly, and then unhide the high poly, and then you'll see they're both kind of overlapping each other here. Next, we'll go back over to the modeling tab again, and then we will make sure that cage is selected and then we'll click this button here which is face select mode and then use Control a to select the entire mesh and then on the left we are looking for a particular tool shrink slash fatten so what this tool does is you can think of it like inflating the model and just sort of making it larger in every direction at once and what we want to do is we want to increase the size of this cage version of the model until you can't see anything from the high poly underneath it. 
So you can either drag this yellow tool or you can click the middle mouse and hold and drag. So we just want to slightly increase it. And you might get to this sort of stage and there's like little tiny bits poking through. In theory, you could go around manually moving these uh, polygons around just to cover everything up. That might be quite a lot of work though. And uh, for the purposes of this tutorial video, I will just expand it a little bit more and a little bit more. There we go. And so now we have an inflated version of the low poly mesh that covers up the high poly mesh entirely. The next step is to give our low poly a uh, UV map. So let's go over to the UV editing tab. We'll hide the cage and the gunslinger. We'll go back to this low poly mesh here. So once we've got the low poly selected here and we're on the UV editing page, we'll go up to this drop down and go to edit mode and then just control A to select all again. And then on the right here, under UV maps, which is under this green object data properties section, we'll click on this plus button here. And what that'll do is it'll create a blank UV map on the left. What we need to do here is box select the whole thing so it becomes orange, then go to UV, unwrap, and then smart UV project. So this is a automatic UV unwrapping tool. And so UV unwrapping is basically where you split up the model into pieces and lay it out flat so that you can tell the computer where to put the different parts of the textures that make it up. Blender's tool is kind of intended to be used alongside someone who is manually unwrapping it, which uh, is something that you can do, but is a bit too advanced for this tutorial here. So we'll make do with just this one tool here. You can usually set or leave all these options as the default. There's something I will say for the island margin, if you want to add like a, little, a one at the end there, just that there's a slight gap between the different parts of the mesh. It'll show up as zero, but that's fine. And once we've done that, if we just hit OK, then that will create a UV map over on the left here. It's kind of a mess and uh, is maybe a little bit, well, difficult to read. But as we say, it's automatically generated and, you know, took us no time at all to make. So we'll deal with that for now. With the UV map created, let's head over to the shading tab at the top here. And then we should still have the Gunslinger low selected. So while you've got that selected there, then in this bottom section, if you click this new button, which will create a new material with a bunch of stuff in it. And the next thing to do is click add and then search and then image texture. And we'll just put that wherever. And then if we click new, we will be creating a new image for a new texture that we're going to be using to detail this model here. And it'll ask us for some details. So this is going to be a normal map. So I'll call it something like Gunslinger normal map. And I'll also ask for the size. So 1024 by 1024 would be ideal, but that would require having a, a very optimal and efficient UV map which we don't have. 2048 by 2048 would be considered like a large high detail texture, which again would be if you have like a proper UV map. So for us right now, we kind of have to stick with 4096 by 4096, which is going to be very large and make it a bit chunkier than it could be, but it will hopefully mean that all of the details we're going to be baking down onto it are preserved. So we've got Gunting a normal map for the name, 4096 by 4096 and we'll just hit OK. Last thing to do while we're here is change this color space option from sRGB to non-color. So next step, if we go to the render properties tab, which is this one that looks like a digital camera here, and we change the render engine to cycles. I'll add a bunch more options to this list here and we want to go down to bake. Well, the bake type, set that to normal. And then to get this all set up correctly, if we unhide all of our models here, and if we select the high poly model and then the low poly model with control click, then go down here to selected to active, open that little drop down and select cage, and then use this little eyedropper tool here to select our cage model. That will be set up, ready to go, and basically what we're doing is we're taking the details from the high poly model and baking them down onto the low poly one. So once we click bake, Blender will have a little think. It might take, you know, a minute or two, depending on your PC. So we'll do that just now. And there we go. 
Once this progress bar at the bottom completes, you'll have uh, a normal map down in the bottom left here. You can kind of zoom out to get a better look at it. And now all we need to do is hook it up. So in this middle section at the bottom here again, we'll click Add and then Search at search for a normal map, let's map that in there, and then we can just click and drag to hook up the color node from here to the color node there, and then the normal node from here to the normal node on here, down at the bottom. And then if we hide our models here, so that we've just got the low poly model selected, you'll see it looks an awful lot like the high poly model. Like if I disconnect this texture and then reconnect it a few times just to show you. Disconnected. It's the blobby mess that we saw before. Reconnected. Looks just like the high poly model, which is very efficient. It's still got the same amount of verts, 18,000, but now it just has a normal texture on it so that it looks highly detailed. Anyway, with that done, we're finally about ready to actually start painting. So let's hop over to texture paint top here and then we will select the uh, material preview button here in the top right just so that we can see the uh, model correctly and on the right here we'll see the details of the texture that's currently on the model you can see we've got the normal map there but we don't want to paint on the normal map that would be a bit strange so we'll click this plus and we'll select base color and you'll want to set this width and height to the same as whatever you set the normal map to so in this case we're just doing 496 by 4096 and name it whatever you like. Material 1 base color is fine for now. I'll hit OK and there we go. With that you are ready to paint. You can use the color picker on the right to select a color like say some sort of nice dark red and then you can either just directly paint onto the model itself like literally click and drag or you can do something like paint directly onto the UV map over here, which is basically the model, but you know, laid out flat. Like let's say we go for a kind of a nice blue color and we paint over this section here, for example, which I'm pretty sure is a part of the coat. We turn the radius up a bit. There we go. Just doing some very, very rough color in here. And yeah, that's showing up on the model. And as we say, you can either do that or just directly paint on the model. So this stage is where you probably spend the most time. As with any sort of painting like this, you can spend as much or as little time as you like. So you could like just throw on some basic colors, or you could add some shading, do the highlights, paint details. Basically, it's just like painting an actual physical mini, really. You kind of go in layers or steps from kind of the broadest strokes down to the most detailed strokes as you go. The tools available here in Blender, by default anyway, are pretty basic, uh, but they can get good results. Like here we've got, you know, you can change the color, the various shades, radius of the uh, the brush itself and the strength of it, so you can kind of overlay them on top of each other. There's also other options like, you know, selecting a color palette or painting with gradients or that sort of thing. So Blender's tools are basic and you can get great results, though it'll probably take a fair bit of time to get them. I've actually been working with Gerbo, who is the community member responsible for most of the painted miniatures in the 3D Canvas token collection. We've been trying out various different tools and trying to find out which ones are new user friendly enough to use for this sort of thing. And to our surprise, while a lot of them are very capable and obviously are very professional tools, the only one that felt to us was easy to use, other than Blender here, was Substance Painter. And so there's going to be a part two of this video where me and Gerbo will kind of discuss the hobby from a painting angle, as well as go over what a kind of substance painter workflow looks like. But for now though, this blender method is entirely functional. So this model is pretty clearly nowhere close to done, but we've only got so much time here today. So once you're done painting, you can export this in the same way that you do for any mini for 3D canvas. So we'll have it selected. We'll go to file, export, and GLTF 2.0 and then we'll do all the usual options so we'll make sure to limit it to selected objects Then down in data in material we'll set the images to JPEG and we'll turn compression on and then we will uncheck these animation settings and we'll name it what we like and save it out wherever it is that we'd like to 
And back over here in Foundry, in 3D Canvas, what I'll do is I'll just copy this token here, and I will just set this to be the mini we just moved over. And then I will scale it up a bit just so that we can see it a bit easier here. There we go. A rather flagrantly unfinished painted mini. So this token here is obviously ready to be used in 3D Canvas here. Obviously, the more you put into the painting stage, the better results you'll get. Um, I just sort of did a really quick job here for this tutorial here. But for example, you know, we've got some of the other minis here that Gerbo's painted in the past that you can already find in the uh, 3D Canvas token compendium that are, you know, the kind of paint jobs you can get with a fair bit more uh, effort, <laughs> as it were. But yeah, so this is a way to get any 3D printing STL you can find get it into 3D canvas and then get it to a state where you can paint it and then give it a custom paint job yourself. That about wraps up this video. Uh, in the near future we'll be posting a part two, as I said, where myself and Jurbo will discuss painting and substance painter. It's a bit of a long one, but I'm sure our painterly minded community members will get something out of it, and I hope you enjoy it as well. For now though, I'll catch you all later.